All right, so most of you saw the write-up on how to switch your EJ20G coil packs to the EJ205, like it's in a bug eye. Um, so the write-up is really good, but there might be a little bit too much information, and um, it kind of overcomplicates it a little bit. So I'm just going to do a quick how-to on the very simple. Um, so here's the EJ20G coil pack. Um, and if you pull the boot back here, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but there's cracks. Um, three of my four were like that. The car ran great, idled fine. Just when it got to full boost, it wasn't hitting uh, boost all the way, and it would cut and shudder like crazy. So I got these EJ205 coil packs here. Um, tell you a little bit real quick before we start. If you notice that it doesn't have the end connector, that's fine. I cut it so I don't have to fish the wires out. Just make sure you have something to work with. Um, you don't need it all. You just you just need something there. Um, so, and the nice thing about the 205 coils is you can just disconnect the harness. So all you're working with is literally the harness. So something else real quick besides mine is uh, dirty as hell. I'll address that later though. Um, is there's three wires instead of two wires like that's on your stock 20G coil pack. So uh, we'll set the, the harness there for the 205 coils out of the way. And all you're going to do is take your stock coil and pull the sheath back just a little bit and you're going to snip it. Just cut down as far as you can. So basically you have the entire harness now with the connector for the stock EJ20G. And you can basically toss the old coil pack because it's garbage. Uh, remove the sheath on this one. So you have, your two, you have your two wires here now and you have one with the three wires. And I did notice that a couple of my wires were different colors on the other um, 205 coils. Some were yellow, some were blue. Um, don't worry about it. This one, the red and the black always stay the same and that's all you need. So basically all it is is uh, you have your 12 volt wire, your ground, and your trigger. And it shows the pin on there. And if you're holding the coil, get the right way for you guys. So you're looking down at the pins and the boot goes out to the left. You'd be like this. You've got your, the first pin is your 12 volt, second pin is your ground, and the third pin is your trigger. So you can just match it up and verify. Um, just for ease of mind. So now all we have is the two harnesses here. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is take some wire strippers. And this part of the film I'm going to speed up because if you don't know how to strip wires, um, just go ahead and, and stop now and take your car to the shop. Alright, so I got the three wires stripped here. And I'm going to do the same thing to our 20G coil. Now I have both harnesses with the wires stripped. Um, I didn't mention, but you should. Um, it's not a must, but it's going to make your life easier. Just go ahead and plug your soldering iron in beforehand if you, that's what you're going to use. That way when you go to use it, um, it's ready and it's you're not going to do very much soldering if your soldering iron is colder than my ex's heart. So, I suck at soldering, but it did the trick. So what I did, well what I'm going to do, is I um, twist the wires together solder it and then I'm using some heat shrink and also that'll keep any moisture or anything out of there so don't do like I usually do and forget to put your heat shrink on there prior to soldering the wires Alright, so this part really, um, however you feel best doing it, like I said, I suck at soldering. So what I do is I twist the wires kind of 
cross and under and whatnot. So they, in all honesty, um, once that's heat shrinked, it should be fine, but I'm still gonna give it some solder just to be safe because I don't want to redo this. And again, I'm gonna speed this part up because um, lucky for all of us, this isn't a how-to on how to solder. Alright, so we've got our 12 volt wire soldered together and it is nice and strong. Uh, we're going to pull our heat shrink back up over it and however you want to heat it. Um, I prefer a lighter because heat gun ends up just being a pain in the ass and the lighter is fast and simple. So now we have everything together. It's nice and sturdy. I still wrap it in tape. I'm going to wrap the whole thing in tape and then I have uh, some wire loom that it's going to go in. Um, I would recommend putting something around it because the engine gets pretty hot. So we're basically we're just going to do the same thing with our our trigger wire. Um, and this one happens to be blue on the 205 coil. Not a big deal. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to twist and tuck. This way I'm already starting out with a nice secure hold on it. And we're going to start this one together. Alright, so we've got our trigger wire soldered as well now. So, same deal. We're going to pull our heat shrink back up. Shrink it down. There we go. Alright. Now we're gonna address that third wire we didn't have on the stock um, EJ20G coils. This is very simple. Um, the 205 coils, like what you're likely gonna find on a bug eye, gets, obviously has a ground wire and that's how the coil pack is grounded. Our EJ20G um, coil packs ground from the coil themselves. So all we're gonna do is we're going to take a little eyelet um, just make sure that you have the correct one that'll fit through the bolt. Uh, we're going to slide it on there. And we're just going to, oops, see, I almost did it again. We're going to put our heat shrink on there. Then we're going to crimp it. Alright, so you're going to make sure it's nice and secure on there. You are going to, once again, pull your heat shrink up. And heat it up on there. And there you go. So now we have our harness completed. Um, what this is going to do is this is attaches to the EJ205 coil and this attaches back to your stock harness in the EJ20G. So with that complete, we will take our EJ205 coil pack once again and just going to plug it back in, nothing special, and remove your bolt. Uh, it'll come out and then you'll just have to thread it out, not a big deal. And you take your ground wire that you put an eyelet on, put your bolt back through, 
and then you thread it back through. Um, I didn't do it in this video, um, but what I would recommend, if you notice how my bolt um, is kind of nasty, corroded, this is going to be part of our ground, so you might want to clean it up. I'll end up cleaning it up, but there's no point in me showing you guys how to wire brush a bolt. And that's literally it. Um, we have our EJ205 coil. I have not installed these back in the car yet, so I'll do another video for that um, just to show how it runs. But I've been told they fit perfectly with no issues, and this will um, just literally clip right back into your stock harness, and that's it. Alright, so I'm reinstalling the coil packs back into the motor. Um, I know the write-up said that uh, they're a little bit bigger, so you might have an issue getting them to fit, um, just as far as clearance-wise. Uh, this one slides right in, but this back one right here is going to be your issue one. Now, the write-up said that if you just take a big pry bar and pry the motor over, um, it'll give you enough clearance, which it's only a little bit off, so I could see how that would work. However, let's see if I can get it to show in the video right. This part right here is what hits. So the coil pack is actually supposed to sit in the engine like this. However, if you put this facing down and stick it in there and then just spin it, rotate, you can get it to slide right in. Uh, this is what I did with this one here. I wasn't going to do a video on how to install the coil packs because you should already know. However, I felt that like that was a, a pretty good piece of key information in there. Um, also, just be sure that the other ones had that uh, plastic in the boot so it was it was sit right in there just fine. You just pushed them in and you were good to go. However, these have the rubber boot all the way down and that's what we wanted. So just make sure that you feel the boot go on the spark plug itself and then you can literally feel it snap in. So just be aware of those two issues when you're installing them. All right, so we've got our coil packs installed. I like the way they're routed and they said everything's good to go. So now it's time to address the igniter. So if you're like me how I was when I first uh, when they first talked about the igniter, not only was I confused, but I thought, where the fuck is the igniter? So you have this bracket here that sits here and it's got your map and your uh, boost solenoid and all that. There's three 12 millimeter bolts. So there's one in the fender and two in the shut tower. You take it off and your uh, igniter is going to sit um, right back there uh, and it's got four little screws that you can that you take out and the whole uh, igniter disconnects off that and that'll give you more room so when I disconnect it's sitting like this and you have a uh, harness coming in from the vehicle and then it goes to the igniter and then from the igniter it goes to the engine harness which uh, is going to the coil packs so you can just disconnect both sides and to make it simple um, with that out of the picture basically all we're doing is eliminating that and going to convert these two to basically one so we're just we're just going to mer merge them that's all we're doing uh there's a color code on the uh whatchamacallit the write-up and it tells you which ones to go into which wire. I'm gonna reference that, and I'm gonna actually put that in my description just in case, and I'm gonna put the the write-up itself in my description of this video. Um, for one, I wanna make sure he gets full credit because I'm following his write-up. This is really his how-to. I'm just making it in a video, and it's a really good write-up, and he deserves full credit, so I'm gonna make sure he gets that and also that way it'll be easy if you need to look it up so you can reference it so I'm not gonna do the video all the way through with um, me stripping wires and all that so I will show you um, these connectors but uh, then I will um, when we come back I'll have the wires merged together and I'll, I'll explain what's going on Alright, so we've got our igniter 
um, unplugged and we took it completely out and I cut both sides of the harness off. There's one coming in an igniter, one going to the out igniter, like I was explaining. I cut both of those off and basically I followed the, the chart and I soldered the wires together. Um, just keep note that there are two blue wires but one is blue with a very faint green stripe so uh, just keep in mind for that um, and there's a black wire with a red stripe and an actual black wire so you might notice the first thing you're noticing uh, when you look at it is one side has five wires and one side has four side with five wires has a black wire that's your ground you are not going to hook that up to anything um, we don't we, we have a ground now from our everything else and it's just it's not needed so the the write-up was was excellent but he went into a lot of detail about which wire goes to what color and the pinouts and how this does this um, and, I, and it made it a little more difficult so you're just removing the igniter patching the wires together leave black out and that's it one thing I didn't say um, I shouldn't have to, but just in case, I'm not sure which of these wires are hot when, and anytime you mess with electrical, you should disconnect your battery. I already had my battery out because it makes it easy to get to the coil packs, so I just haven't put it back in yet. Um, now all I'm going to do is put some tape around each one of these, and then tape them together uh, like a harness, and put everything back together, and we'll see if it fires up.